going on guys? So we are still out here at Moride and we are in their assembly plant. This is a really, really cool plant. And in front of me, you see something that may look familiar, but it's gonna look even more familiar when I tell you uh, what's written on it. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, so in their assembly plant, this is where their OEMs that they work with, like your DRVs and your Luxes, get their equipment assembled and then shipped out to them. So whenever you look at certain DRV units, you can actually get them equipped from the factory with the Moride independent suspension, which is really cool. Some of the high-end, especially some of the high-end fifth wheel uh, OEM customers will either option or come with our independent suspension standard from the factory. Yep. So like Lux. Like Lux, example. exactly. And then this is gonna be basically where they take all the subcomponents that we fabricated here at our shop they bring them over here to get assembled with disc brakes and different components. Then we'll band these together and ship them out to our customer. So real quickly, let's let's show somebody how this system actually works from the bottom side of an axle. Yeah. So you have rubber right here and they have it essentially what vulcanized together exactly. to, onto this area here. So it's adhered to the steel plate on each side. And it's just, it's such a different take on rubber suspension. A lot of times you see companies that put like a big rubber puck as a bushing and you don't get the type of dampening that you're looking for. Um, the, the damping effect you get from this setup along with the actual shock tube, it's, it's kind of ingenious because you're moving the rubber bushing in a different fashion than most companies do in, in terms of how they design things. So the key is exactly what you pointed to. So our rubber shear springs that you see down inside of here are technically two different pieces bolted together, offset, and they're moving in a shearing motion. So they're yep. moving up and down just like this. So this is the same technology that we came, up, came out with and patented back in 1966 using the same technology today because for for what we see it's some of the best performance mm -hmm. in the market well and and shearing forces it's a lot different than compression correct right so that's the thing you guys have to know what you're doing to make that work and to be able to last yep, yep. and this is uh as you mentioned too with the shock absorber it works in tandem with the rubber shear spring there then we have this big bracket this arm that runs all the way through here and that's basically going to be the pivot point so as your shear springs are going to move up and down that wheel is going to need to move with it as well and so there's a bracket that gets welded you can see it right here that bracket runs all the way through and that's where that grease is to make sure that's lubricated so as you go over those rough roads that wheel can move properly in tandem with the, the shear spring let me tell you guys the welds look really good I mean, you guys have some really good welders. I mean, because everything is such a clean weld, really, really nice beads. It's just, you know, that's one area that you can instantly spot a lower quality item is how the welds look. And everything on this looks really, really solid. Yep, it's just another way that we, we take pride in the product that we produce. So everything from the material we use to the welding that we do to the assembly, we've got some really good teams here in, internally. So I have a 10 foot cargo mate trailer that has about a 2000 pound cargo capacity. I would love to throw a set of these on there. <laughs> it might uh. be a little overkill for you, but <laughs> hey, maybe in the long run it would work for you. Is this solid steel right here? It is. Yep, it's it's sawed and milled steel. That's what, two inches thick <laughs> of just solid steel. Nope. You guys really don't want, I, I know what it is, it's you don't want to take liability if something fails, so you're just going to make it so it doesn't fail. We make sure it does not fail, that's exactly <laughs> right. That's and crazy. The disc brakes here are another option. So you can do drum brakes, which are traditional. That's what comes usually on uh, direct from the factory, but this is going to be an upgrade for a lot of customers. Make sure you stop quicker, uh, especially in emergency stop situations where you might have a car in front of you that slams yeah. on their brakes or a deer that runs out in front of you. So just another way that we protect the trailer long run. So here's the one, the one caveat to this, which I always like to talk about, and that's weight. Uh, I can imagine this is significantly heavier than the components you remove, even though this isn't the same type of weight as, you know, this is unsprung weight essentially, mm -hmm. because your components are designed to calculate or factor in the weight that they are gonna add to the system. That said though, um, how much more weight do you typically add if you replace your, you know, 7K axles, two 7K axles with 
your independent suspension system? So there are different things that will factor into that. Um, again, we have different components. We have 7K, 8K, all the way up to 10K units. So some of these components will shift and change in size and weight. But overall, you're adding another 100 to 200 pounds yeah. overall, depending on if it's a tandem or triple axle. Um, I would say, I don't know the exact weight change, but probably for one axle, you're probably adding 150 pounds. So we'll call it 300 or so for yeah. tandem. But you're adding it in the right way though. You're adding it in a structurally more robust way. It's kind of like saying, you know, I want the frame of my RV to be stronger, but I don't want to add any weight to make that happen. Exactly. You know, you're adding weight and structure in a really profound way but it's also structurally helping your RV, especially after you guys put your riser tubes and your cross brakes and all that stuff in place. Yeah, and again, what we're doing is we're making the frame take less beating. So we may be adding a little bit of weight. It will not change the, the gross carrying capacity on the unit um, if you get it installed aftermarket. Now, direct from the factory, typically it will enhance that carrying mm -hmm. capacity. But again, what we're doing is we're taking some of that stress from the frame and components. So technically we're helping a lot of the, the structure and the unit as it goes down the road. So we're not taking away from it at all, we're actually enhancing it. Well, you technically lower the center of gravity slightly as well too. You add more weight to the ground, which makes it less likely to tip or less likely to react in heavier winds, things like that. I mean, it's not, it's marginal at that point, but still it's every little bit. Very cool. Let's see what else you got in this, this building. Okay, so this is something I've actually never seen before. And we were kind of walking around the corner here and I noticed axles and I noticed airbags and I noticed trailing arms. So this is interesting because it kind of looks like an independent suspension system, but it's not because you have your solid axle going through. Uh, this is more in line with what you might have like on a pickup truck, but it has airbags. So that's really cool. Um, now, are the airbags mainly designed for ride or to actually raise and lower the RV? It's gonna be for both. So you can dump all the air out and ride on the bumpers or you can inflate those airbags as well. It's going to enhance your ride quality quite a bit with the air suspension and the airbags. But then also, if you need to clear some rocks or debris, you can lift it up yeah. and pump a bunch of air into those. Or even airbags. if you're overhang or your, your approach or departure angles. And these are going to a Forest River product, so I don't know which one's getting these, but this is really cool. Are you going to sell these aftermarket as well? We've talked about it. Um, as of right now, not yet. There's some intricacies to the assembly and the installation on the aftermarket side. Um, it might be in the future, but as of right now, we haven't worked on that to develop it. Where I could see this is on the cargo trailer side or the car hauler side, uh, mainly to drop it down so you can load things in like sports cars, things like that. Yeah. Um, and then raise it back up for, for traveling. Um, especially because, you know, if you're hauling a car, almost all the suspension you always see on cargo trailers is traditional leaf sprung suspension with a standard equalizer. But this could cushion that ride while at the same time giving you that flexibility of raising and lowering that approach angle so you can get vehicles, tractors, mowers, all sorts of stuff onto your trailers more effectively. Yeah, it's a great idea too, especially for those high-end car haulers, you know, if they have hundred, two hundred, three hundred three hundred thousand dollar car in there, you want to make sure that it's riding smooth. So that's definitely an yep. application for the future. And an independent suspension isn't as vital. Like in an R V where you have dishes and furniture and stuff inside. It's it's you're wanting to just enhance the ride. This is really cool. I'm I was looking for something that was kind of like super innovative that I've never <laughs> filmed before and we stumbled upon it by just walking through here. That is really, really cool. And they put some gigantic airbags on here. I mean, you look at vehicle airbags, they're usually like five or six inches diameter. Then you have like Airlift who makes like an eight inch diameter airbag. These things look like they're like 10 or 12 inch diameter airbags. These things are huge. That is super cool, actually. I would love to throw these on one of my trailers if it's possible. Yeah. We need to figure that out. Hey, they're already crated up and I got a forklift, so <laughs> right. let's, let's just get them all let's sent out. It. All right, yeah, let's, uh, let's see what else we can find. Okay, so I am in a really, really cool part of the Moride facility here. This is all pause related stuff. These are the pause frame rails. Check it out. This is absolutely cool. So they got the aluminum frame rails here. They cut and mill everything there. They make all their holes for all of the huck bolts. But yeah, all of this stuff is Palomino pause. You guys had to really dive in heavy into aluminum frame rails when you started working with them. We did, and we've worked with steel and aluminum on a large capacity for a number of years, but this is kind of a whole new world, and it's turned out better than we could have ever expected. Yep, and this is kind of cool. So when I saw the frame over at the pause factory, they showed how the cross members 
sit flush right here with this upper flange. And what's interesting is, is at first I thought that this was connected on top. I didn't realize that it's actually formed or extruded with the actual form already there. That is so cool. So this is all one piece. They haven't added anything to it. And that is one heck of a strong looking frame. That is super, super cool. What about the suspension? You got pause suspension in here? I think so. They might have finished up some of the assembly, but we can walk over yeah. and see if they're on the corner. Let's hunt it down. And right here is a pause frame. So again, if you haven't been following the channel or what's going on with pause, you may not have realized that this entire frame, suspension, chassis, all of this is Moride. So that's a, a big part of what you see whenever you look at a Palomino Paws. And you can see just how this thing is built. It is insanely well built. And one thing I've noticed about Moride is you guys don't like to underbuild products, right? It's, it's, if it means using heavier steel, thicker steel, something just to prevent or to eliminate the risk of something failing, you guys will do that times five. I mean, just the stuff, if you, again, look at how they've built all this. This is all aluminum, by the way. It looks like it's steel, and there's people that think that there's gonna be some type of Galvac corrosion because of the, the contact of the two, but this is all aluminum. It's powder-coated aluminum. That is awesome. Aluminum, aluminum. The only steel here is here, and this is powder-coated and insulated so you don't have dissimilar metals contacting each other. But this is absolutely awesome. They even have a cool little tunnel right there. Man. Yeah, one thing, I mean, for the people that get out and they're on the road, they're camping or doing off-roading, what's the last thing that you want? You don't want to be broken down on the trail. You know, if you're only going vacationing five, ten times a year, you have to spend one of those weekends that you're taking time off for vacation to get away with your family. You don't want to be broken down. So. There are times that we overbuild, but we do it to make sure that the end user is able to enjoy their camping experience long-term. So some of this stuff, again, aluminum's great because it's lighter weight, it's extremely durable, especially with the way our engineers develop it, but it's not at the expense of uh, durability. It's gonna be a very durable, well-built product. Yep, and one thing that, you know, we've uh, we've alluded to multiple times in videos, and I talked to Maynard about this over at Paws, and I've talked about this time and time again, this right here is a fully engineered frame. This is not a run-of-the-mill I-beam frame that goes down an assembly plant and then they may have had an engineer who, who helped design one and then they're trying to make that same frame work for a hundred different floor plans. This frame is specifically designed for the Palomino paws. And I bring that up because if you look at the sheer number of frames that are here, which is only three of them right here, they may have a couple of them shipped out there. You have enough material back there for a few more frames. But the reality is, is you're not pumping these out in mass quantities. And I bring this up because a lot of people kind of, they get uh, a little agitated when they hear how much the Palomino Paws costs. But what they don't realize is that the cost of this frame right here is probably, I, I, my guesstimation, and I was told I'm not too far off, about five times more expensive than a 42 foot long fifth wheel conventional frame. Just because of the materials that have to go into this, the engineering, the design, I mean, this is how you want your frame to look. This is amazing construction. And I could imagine if you guys get into the fifth wheel frame manufacturing segment and you start building frames for large toy haulers, large fifth wheels, uh, it's gonna upset the market because people are gonna be like, uh, why is this RV cost so much now? It's because of that type of engineering and construction. It's crazy. Just like if you look at your uh, your independent suspension system, it's $10,000-ish is kind of an average you could expect to pay for the full upgrade with disc brakes and everything versus how much is the stock suspension that you typically get on a fifth wheel. Yeah, just for an equalizer, it could be a couple hundred, a few hundred bucks. Yeah, so. and then the axles are even maybe, you round high, you might be at $2,500. Right. Right, so when you want to pay for something better, you're gonna have to pay for that better thing. And oftentimes it means better materials, better engineering, better design, um, but not nearly as many of them being produced. When you don't have the volume, the cost of every product goes up. It's just a, a factor of, of economics, you know? Quality over quantity. And you know, one day we'd love to have both hand in hand. We believe that we're gonna get there, but right now we're focusing on manufacturing to a high quality standard 
And that's what we try to focus on day in and day out. Right here in the US, my friend. That's right. Absolutely. Well, this is super cool. I'm so glad I found this. I'm so glad we looked at that independent, or not the independent, the air suspension axles over there. That was super awesome. Um, do they make the suspension for the paws in this factory too? Um, I believe they do. It's going to be a combination of this factory and another factory. So we'll look around, see if we can find one here. If not, we might have to scope something out somewhere else. Okay. Well, guys, if you haven't had a chance, now's a great time. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again real soon.